Welcome to this week's Money Metals Podcast, helping gold and silver investors during these treacherous times. Now, here's this week's market wrap with commentary and analysis from the company voted 2015's Precious Metals Dealer of the Year in the U.S., Money Metals Exchange. Welcome to this week's Market Wrap Podcast. I'm Mike Leeson. Coming up, we'll hear another tremendous interview with Gerald Salente of the Trends Research Institute and the Trends Journal. Gerald weighs in on how to play the Trump card, the chaos that's brewing in the Eurozone, and gives us his thoughts on gold and where it's headed. Don't miss my conversation with Gerald Salente, one of the top trend forecasters in the world and a man who doesn't pull any punches, coming up after this week's market update. Precious metals markets continue marching higher this week in spite of a stronger U.S. dollar. The dollar index pushed back above the 100 level and is headed for its first weekly advance of the year. Neither the dollar rally nor the midweek oil inventory report showing a massive supply buildup in crude caused much damage in raw materials markets. Crude oil prices actually recovered off their lows following the bearish inventory report, which traders seem to have already been pricing in. Over the last two months, oil has been locked into a tight trading range between $51 and $54 per barrel. A strong breakout higher would have inflationary implications for the economy, but a breakdown back below $50 could generate disinflationary ripples and cause the Fed to rethink the need for rate hikes. As for the precious metals markets, gold prices are up 0.7% this week to trade at $1,230 an ounce. Silver checks in at $17.92 per ounce and is posting a 1.8% gain on the week. Platinum is down a bit today and is now in negative territory for the week, although just slightly, and is currently down 0.4% since last Friday's close, while its sister metal, palladium, is surging again and is up 4.5% now on the week. The big moves for investors so far this year have been in the metals, but the big headlines continue to be generated by the stock market and the White House. The major U.S. stock market averages rallied to new highs Thursday on renewed optimism for tax cuts. President Donald Trump promised he would put forth a bold tax cut package in the weeks ahead. This after some establishment Republicans in Congress had indicated that they'd rather not get to work on tax relief until 2018 or maybe never. Some of the same GOP politicians who are less than enthusiastic about lowering America's tax burden are now also talking about putting band-aids on Obamacare rather than repealing and replacing it. Monetary reform proponent Steve Forbes, who was a guest expert on our Money Metals podcast last year, delivered some pointed words this week to congressional Republicans. Already now, they're backing off on health care. They're backing off on the tax thing. They don't get something done soon. They're going to be in big trouble economically and politically, especially in 2018. They could lose the House if they botch this thing on taxes. And even if they pass the tax cut late in the year, if they make it retroactive to January 1st, that'll cover a lot of sins. Perhaps Republican voters will be able to whip their members of Congress into shape on this issue. But there's no guarantee that a tax reform bill will get signed in time for taxpayers to see any relief on this year's taxes. Among the many problems with the current tax code and its thousands of pages of impenetrable legalese is that it discriminates against precious metals investors. Stocks, bonds, and most other financial assets that are held for more than one year are subject to favorable long-term capital gains treatment. Gold and silver bullion, on the other hand, get taxed at the so-called collectibles rate of 28%. Until the arbitrary and unfavorable tax treatment of gains on physical precious metals is ended, something that groups like the Sound Money Defense League are working to do, an IRA can help you avoid it. Holding physical bullion coins, rounds, and bars within a self-directed IRA means your gains are sheltered for taxation. When the time comes, you could sell your bullion for cash within the retirement account, owe no taxes on the gains, and reinvest in stocks and other assets if you wish. Or you could begin taking distributions in cash. You could also choose to never sell and instead take distributions in the form of the bullion you hold in your IRA. That way, you're never in paper assets. As with any IRA, the distributions themselves may be taxable unless they're from a Roth IRA, but you incur no collectibles tax on any selling of precious metals that is done within an IRA of any type. If you're interested in setting up a precious metals IRA, 
A Money Metals Exchange specialist can help guide you through the process. Just give us a call at 1-800-800-1865 to get started or visit the IRA section of our website to learn more about how they work. Well now, without further delay, let's get right to this week's exclusive interview. It is my privilege now to welcome in Gerald Salente, publisher of the renowned Trends Journal. Mr. Salente is a highly sought after guest on news programs throughout the world and has been forecasting some of the biggest and most important trends before they happen for more than 30 years now. And it's always an honor to have him on with us. Mr. Salente, welcome back and thanks so much for joining us again. Uh, oh, thank you, Mike. Well, the last time we had you on, Gerald, was uh, the week before the election. So to start off, uh, give us your thoughts on how the first few weeks of the Donald Trump administration have gone, in your view, and have you zeroed in on any trends that you see as being likely with this new presidency? Well, uh, as you know, we had forecast him to be a winner in, the, in May of 2016 in our Trends Journal. And the, the biggest surprise, of course, was that when you look at the facts, and the facts are that Wall Street was very pro-Clinton, even to the extent when you go the weekend before Election Day, back in November, the FBI, when they said they weren't going to go any further with looking into Clinton possible misdeeds and mishaps and missteps, uh, you saw the markets open on Monday up 371 points on the expectation that Hillary Clinton would win. And then we know what happened on election night and when the polls started showing that Donald Trump would win. We saw the Dow go down over the futures, go down over 800 points and gold spike over 50 bucks on the expectation that Trump would win. And then all of a sudden, the next day, everything changed. And here we are, the Nasdaq, the Dow, the S&P, uh, they're all at record highs. So what happened? The business of America is now business. The business of America has been politics for a lot of years. And again, we're political atheists. We call things the way we see them. It's not what we like, what we want, what we wish for. It's what is. And you have a lot of positive expectations coming out of Wall Street and the consumer society. These are facts. For example, the spike in the Dow from... Election Day to New Year's Day was the largest that we've seen since Dwight D. Eisenhower got elected in 1952. Small business confidence in December spiked to the highest level it did since 1980. So who got elected in 1980? Ronald Reagan. What went on before Ronald Reagan? Well, you remember the Iran hostage crisis and stagflation? So what we're saying is is that, you know, the trend is your friend and follow it for what it is. So we're looking at the Trump uh, administration on one that is positive for business with his deregulations. Again, whether you agree with them or not, we're just saying what is. And there's certainly some of the deregulations that I don't agree with, but it's what is. And the deregulation and the particularly in the financial sector and also... We're looking at uh, tax cuts, and we're looking at infrastructure buildup. So those are positive elements for business. And, of course, also the bringing jobs back to the United States. So that's what's driving the market. On the other hand, when we had forecast that Trump would be a winner, we said that the only way he could lose is a wild card, because as trend forecasts, as we always say, no one could predict the future. There are wild cards. And we also said there's no wilder card than Donald Trump himself. So he has the, he has the ability to, to juice the market and to kill the market with what he does, says, and is by his actions. Furthering the point here, many of our customers are more optimistic about the future since Trump's election, and, and there are reasons to be hopeful. As you mentioned, he's talking about lower taxes. He implemented a hiring freeze across several abusive federal agencies. He wants to avoid going to war with Russia. He has forwarded what appears to be a good candidate for the Supreme Court. However, it's increasingly clear the Republican Congress is going to drag their feet on tax reform. They've already been waffling 
on a repeal of Obamacare. People like John McCain and Lindsey Graham have been criticizing Trump's less bellicose posture toward Russia. And now we aren't surprised Republicans in Congress have been giving little more than lip service to limited government for decades now. So given that situation, what do you think people can realistically expect in the way of reforms? And think of the names that you mentioned, Lindsey Graham and John McCain. They don't count. McConnell doesn't count. Paul Ryan doesn't count. Go back to less than a month before the election. They weren't supporting Trump. There is no Republican Party. It's the Trump Party. Trump's in charge. He has two years to do what he wants. They'll all fall in line. For the rhetoric, for example, you mentioned about pro-Russian stance and the anti-sentiments that he's getting from Congress, let's flip that over and why we're concerned about on one aspect he talks about you know, making peace with Russia, non-intervention, and then there's the Iranian issue. I mean, going out and, and uh, hearing the new defense secretary, James Mattis, saying Iran was, quote, the single biggest uh, state sponsor of terrorism in the world, I mean, that's just a lot of BS. I mean, you know, Iran hasn't attacked a country in over 200 years. Yeah, they're in Syria because they were invited there by the government, the government that Obama and Clinton and the others didn't want. But that doesn't make them a terrorist nation. Oh, yeah, they're supporting Hezbollah. Well, Hezbollah's in Lebanon, and they've been fighting against the Israeli occupation that almost destroyed the joint. And Hezbollah is not a terrorist organization by a lot of nations around the world. So what we're saying is, this is what we're saying, Michael, is that there's the, this is what's destabilizing the markets. It's, it's these two extreme cases, going back to tax reform and whatever Trump is going to, he's going to get it all. These guys are going to collapse like little boys. Because I think when, when Paul Ryan isn't playing Speaker of the House, this little nobody of nothing, I think he used to be Eddie Munster, you know, the Munsters. There's nobody there. There's nobody in the Democratic Party. There's nothing there. That's why Trump won. And that's one of our top trends coming out with our new Trends Journal. Play the Trump card. Trump didn't only defeat uh, Hillary Clinton. He beat Obama. Obama campaigned more than any sitting president for a candidate in the party. Never saw anything like it. Folks, my legacy depends on it. And the folks told him what to do with it. Because he didn't only lose the presidency, they lost the House, they lost the Senate, and they lost state houses across the nation in unprecedented numbers. He beat, beat Hollywood. He beat the Katzenbergs, the Spielbergs. He beat the De Niro's. He beat the Clooney's. He beat the Beyonce's. He beat the Jay Z's. He beat Silicon Valley. We're telling people there's nothing there. You can make your future. Trump just showed it. You got a product, stamp that thing made with pride in America and take out the top. You want to make sneakers, you go after Phil Knight up in Oregon and say, this guy's selling out the nation, They're getting his, his product made in slave labor countries, just like Trump took out the top with Jed Bush at the first presidential debate in the Republican Party. So what we're saying, Mike, is there are a lot of conflicts, but there are a lot of directions. So what we're telling people is to look past what you like, what you wish, what you want, what you think, and look at what is, because there's never been a what is opportunity like we see it now. Speaking of uh, playing that Trump card, one of the things that Trump has been talking about from day one is to make America great again by bringing manufacturing jobs back to the U.S. Now, in terms of the ramifications to the currency markets, you have to think that the Fed is going to need to be ultra accommodative and keep interest rates low because it's going to be very difficult to get the manufacturing sector going if we have a strong dollar. Uh, so it looks to us that cheap money, inflation and low interest rates are going to persist here, Gerald. But how do you see it? Yes, and again, the Fed is caught in a trap, because if the economy continues to pick up, if they start spending more stimulus money, if inflation starts increasing, the Fed's going to be forced to raise interest rates, and it's unprecedented that we have them this low. We've never seen anything like this in the history of the world, part one or part two. And so there's going to be a rise in interest rates, but then what happens is we are seeing what's going on. You're seeing, you know, well, the dollar's pulling back a little bit now, but look what's going on in China. Here's, a, here's, a, here's Trump where he's 100% wrong. Blaming China, for example, 
for manipulating their currency, the yuan, and driving it down purposely so they could export more product. Their exports are down. Their their yuan is 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 getting crushed. They have capital outflows that they cannot stop. You're you're looking at the uh, the Chinese forex reserves continuing to shrink, falling for seven consecutive months, down below that psychological key three trillion dollar level. You're seeing, by the way. Bitcoin also being boosted because the people in China see their currency being devalued and they're buying gold and bitcoins as a safe haven. And again, we don't know where Bitcoin's going because any government could regulate that. But as we're looking at gold, it's bigger than the United States. And the only reason the United States dollar as we see it is strong is because so many of these other currencies are so weak. Take a trip to, to Mexico. Go over to Turkey. You're seeing one currency after another collapsing. And some of them are, are regaining the strength, but the weakness is, is paramount. It's in front of everybody's eyes. And when you see the sec- world's second largest economy, such as China, fighting to keep the capital outflows from stopping. China last year scrapped over $75 billion in foreign transactions trying to stem the currency outflows. So the United States is caught in a trap here, and you you pointed it out. If they raise interest rates, what are the manufacturers who they're going to sell to? And if they don't raise interest rates, we got this Ponzi scheme that keeps going and building, because you know that's the only reason the equity markets ever gained any strength, was stock buybacks and merger and acquisition activity. One of the key drivers for higher gold prices is negative real interest rates. We could be seeing that uh, throughout the globe, obviously not just here in the U.S., but globally, as you mentioned, with a lot of the uh, problems with the currencies. If we see these inflationary pressures continuing, does it make the yellow metal look good? Basically, how are you viewing precious metals here, Gerald, over the near and medium term? Oh, well, again, we're not, we're not, we do not give financial advice. I want to make that very clear with trend forecasts. Here's our forecast. Gold still has a downside risk if, the, if they start raising interest rates. The stronger the dollar gets, the lower gold goes. But again, we're looking at a global economy. Now, I mentioned about what's going on with the currency problems around the world. If you were in China, what would you rather own, gold or yuan? If you were in Turkey, would you rather have lira or gold or if in Mexico? Now the crisis is also building in Europe with the euro. We're going to see a default coming in Greece. They're even talking about them finally pulling out of the European Union. Now we're looking at also the elections going on in Italy, in Netherlands, in Germany, in France, with the populist parties talking about pulling out of the Eurozone and pulling out of the Euro. If that happens, gold goes through the roof. Our downside risk of gold, as we see it, is about 100 to $150 which is a very small downside. The upside potential is well over 2,000. But our forecast for it to go to 2,000 is that first it has to stabilize strongly and solidly over 1,400. So 1,480, 1,460, 1,440, that kind of keep going back and forth, and then it's a hit toward 2,000. But again, there are also pressures now particularly a strong dollar that could weigh against gold. And then we have to look globally again, and let's look at the geopolitical situation. It's only heating up in Ukraine. That place is ready to explode. In Israel, it's going to... They just passed a law where they can now expropriate Palestinian land. And they're also building some fort thousand settlements on occupied territory it is against again it's not what you like what you wish who you support nothing to do with that it's against international law you're going to start seeing real blowback start to happen we're looking at the middle east there's no end in sight in the afghan war as a matter of fact the united states territory went from having their, their government that the United States support controlling 72% of Afghanistan. It's now down to 56%. Iraq is up for grabs. So what we're saying is we have to look beyond 
the economic fundamentals and look at the entire geo-economic and geopolitical situation. And when we look at that, we say that there is no safer safe haven than gold. Getting back to Europe here, 2017 is shaping up to be another year where events in Europe dominate the headlines. Last year we had Brexit. This year a number of other nations will be voting. You alluded to that a moment ago. Well, there's big ramifications there for the future of the EU. Uh, France and Germany are among the nations with important elections coming up soon. Should either of those two nations select a leader who is opposed to membership in the European Union, it, it would very likely spell the end of that political experiment and the euro currency. And it looks like anti-EU can candidates have the momentum. Uh, now, I know you've been uh, watching events in Europe closely for a long time. What are you expecting to happen there, Gerald? You know, it's still a toss-up in France. You know, Marine Le Pen's party, the uh, National Front, the anti-Euro, uh, anti-European uh, Union party, they, they'll win the first round, but, but will they win the second round? It's, it's up for grabs, but it's getting closer because the establishment candidate, Francois Fillon, uh he he was he was going to be the clear winner <clears throat> but they found out and they've been reporting that he gave his wife and kids when he was in prime minister and other positions uh over uh, almost a million dollars in no show jobs so he's out and then there's also Italy with the five star movement Cinque Stelle and they just threw out Renzi and they're going to have an election over there and the Italians have had it too they don't want the euro they're tired of it Germany as well, and Netherlands. <clears throat> there's, a re there's a reality that the end of the euro is going to come sooner rather than later. When that comes, there's going to be massive destabilization. And, of course, the Brexit movement continues to move forward uh, on the currency ends. And, again, gold is going to be the, the safe haven asset. Having said that, you're also going to see countries trying to do everything they can to drive down the prices, particularly India, which they're already doing with the taxes and other restraints that they have, and China trying to make it harder to buy gold. That's why a lot of people are moving into Bitcoin. And again, we're not bullish on Bitcoin simply because it could be manipulated very easily and very quickly by any government. And then going back to gold, you know, when gold prices start to really spike, you're going to start seeing the governments coming in and doing massive short sales, the paper market trying to drive down the price. There's no question about it, because this is what's going on now is the ultimate threat to fiat currencies. They're digital currencies, not worth the paper they're not printed on. It's not going to be a straight run up. However, having said that, when, when it all comes down, there's going to be, again, no safer haven uh, than being in gold. No commodity, no currency is going to be worth more than gold as we see it. There seems to be growing social unrest in the U.S. and around the globe. Uh, what's behind it? Will it continue? And, and where is this all leading, Gerald? The what's behind it are people are tired of getting shafted. You know, we talked earlier about the trade deals. I mean, the fact of the matter is, what are we going on, 23 years with negative trade deficits? With Mexico, we used to have positive trade deficits uh, before NAFTA. I mean, it's not working. So the people are tired of having service sector jobs that don't pay standard of living wages. Now, I'm not making that up. I'll give you an example. In the United States, 51% of the people that are full-time jobs are earning less than $30,000 a year. Here's another fact. Obama brags, you know, folks, I created over 10 million jobs. You're right, you did. Now let's look at the Harvard-Princeton study that came out and showed that 94% of those jobs are temporary jobs. So what's going on is the unrest is that people are tired of getting shafted by globalization, multinationalization, and centralized governments. And that's what's going on in Europe, and that's what's starting to happen in the United States. You see, Trump, it's, it's not the messenger, it's the message. If there was a different messenger than him, they, they would have creamed Clinton. I mean, he won, it just, as we said, despite him being the, the wildest of wild cards. How many times did he almost kill his, his candidacy? It's the message, and the message is people are tired of getting shafted. I, I mentioned about Fillon in France. That, that's not the exception, it's the rule. Where you have all these little clowns, these little boys of nothing, 
that are running governments that take care of their own and shift everybody else. That's what's going on in Italy. They're tied to the corruption. And it's going on in the United States. Again, going back, there is no Democratic and Republican Party. They're a little bunch of nobodies. Who do you have? I mentioned the names. Mitch McConnell, Lindsey Graham, Paul Ryan. Not a man among them. Look at the Democrats. Little Chucky Schumer. A little bunch of crybaby nobodies. Diane Not So Feinstein. A bunch of losers. Play the Trump card. Look for at what it is. Create your own future. There's never been a better time than now. And we're going to be highlighting a lot of this in the New Trends Journal. Well, outstanding stuff, Mr. Solani. Thanks so much for joining us again. You've always been a great guest, and we love having you on, and I appreciate your candid insights as usual. Now, before we let you go, as we always do, please let folks know how they can get their hands on the tremendous information you put out, both online and with the Trends Journal magazine, as well as anything else that's going on there at the Trends Research Institute, including a conference and retreat that you're doing in Ireland in a few months. Talk about that as well. Yeah, that's right. We have one in Ireland, and you can find out more, of course, by going to our website, trendsresearch.com, trendsresearch.com. And besides the conferences, of course, we have the Trends Journal, the quarterly, a Trends Monthly, a Trend Alert each week, Trends in the News broadcast each weekday night. And also, we're going to be opening up the Trends Journal in India. Uh, very, very big launch coming up. And as you mentioned, we have the, uh, the conference in Ireland. And if you want to find out more about that, go to trends, plural, trendsconferences.com, www.trendsconferences.com, and you can find out more about that. And thank you so much for having me on your show and for all that you do. Well, likewise, and uh, thanks for coming on. Excellent stuff. I uh, hope we can catch up before long as uh, we continue to sift through what appears to be shaping up to be a very tumultuous year around the globe and ultimately what it will mean for precious metals investors. Uh, thanks again, Mr. Salani, for being so generous with your time, and I hope you have a great weekend. Thank you. Well, that will do it for this week. Our sincere thanks to Gerald Solene, publisher of the renowned Trends Journal. For more information, the website, again, is trendsresearch.com. Be sure to check that out. And check back here next Friday for our next weekly market wrap podcast. Until then, this has been Mike Leeson with Money Metals Exchange. Thanks for listening and have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you for joining us for this week's Money Metals podcast. Be sure to come back next week. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast through iTunes for answers to all of your questions or to discreetly and securely buy or sell gold or silver coins, bars, and rounds. Call 1-800-800-1865 or visit www.moneymetals.com. Our knowledgeable and no-pressure specialists are standing by between 7 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. Mountain Time, Monday through Friday. Or you can lock in your order online, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Again, visit us at www.moneymetals.com or call 1-800-800-1865.